So in the last few weeks, I've performed a number of Angular experiments, all in uh, the goal of trying to create a custom select component that allows me to best leverage the browser's viewport real estate and CSS stacking order, which means that no matter where my dropdown is located, I want my options menu to take up as much viewport as is meaningful for the content of the, of the dropdown. So for example, you can see that my uh, menu root here is centered vertically and horizontally. However, when I open the menu, the menu starts above it because there's enough content to push the menu up. Now I can reposition the menu to the bottom right and you'll see now, uh, not only does it position the menu far above the button, but it also shifts it over to the left such that it never overlaps with the viewport edge. Similarly, if I go top right, you can see now it's below the button. If I go top left, below the button and, and a little over and then uh, bottom left, we haven't seen yet. Now to make it even more interesting, if I make the viewport smaller and try to do it, what you'll notice is that we actually hit both the top and the bottom edge and we get an overflow scroll bar for this particular menu. So even in a highly constrained viewport, I'm still at least doing my best to try and leverage as much viewport real estate as I have available. Um, now in order to do this, if we look at the elements of the page, what you'll notice is that in my HTML select my custom dropdown. Inside the custom dropdown, I only have my root. I don't actually have the options. And that's because the HTML select component actually translocates a view fragment for the options menu out of the bounds of the app uh, of the HTML select component and into the body of the document. So that puts it into the root stacking context, which means that I can throw a high Z index on that and it won't. Uh, be hidden by other portions of the page. Now, what that does mean is that I have to position this, um, position this relative to another element on the page, and they're nowhere near each other in the DOM tree, which is a little bit challenging, but uh, we can use the get bounding client rect method in order to make that uh, not, so, not so bad. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the code and see how this works. Uh, first, let's just look at our app component, and you can see here my controls for moving the select around. And the select itself, uh, from the consumer standpoint, is actually fairly simple. I just have the HTML select element. I'm giving it a value, uh, and just to demonstrate here, the values work, right? I can switch things up. Anyway, um, and then inside my HTML select, I have two helper components. I have the HTML select root and the HTML select option. Uh, the root is how we render the button on the page and the options go into the drop-down menu itself. Um, and you can see I'm just using an ng4 here over the friends collection, rendering that out, and then I'm adding the class selected when the current friend in the iteration equals my BFF, right? And that's how we know to highlight the element in the drop-down. Okay, so let's take a look at the HTML select because that's really where the meat of this demo takes place. Um, there are actually three different components here. Like I said, there's the HTML select component. Then if we scroll down, there's the root component, which has no logic. It simply just um, uh, projects its content and has a little bit of styling. And then there's the options component, which really all that does is bind a click handler such that it can tell the HTML select, that parent component, which value to select. Uh, you can see here, uh, we just take the value and we tell the HTML select element to, to select it, which actually just emits an event. Okay, so let's jump up again to our HTML select component. So this is going to be, there's two things here. One is, here's our root and our menu. Uh, the first feature is that we take this menu ref right, class menu, and we actually translocate it from the bounds of this component into the document body, right, class menu. If we jump back over here into the browser and we look at our elements, here's our class menu. Sorry, class menu, not class body. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is that we then position, as you can see in the inline CSS here, this menu relative to the uh, root such that it can uh, maintain the best real estate uh, consumption. So let's take a look at how those two things work. So first, let's look at the translocation of the view. So if we jump down to the 
after ng view in it, what you'll see is we take that menu reference, that element reference, and we just move that native element out of the component and into the document body. Now, because we do this in the after view in it, the template's already been wired up by Angular, the change detection's already been put in place, the interpolation's already been wired up, all that stuff has been wired up. And the really awesome thing about Angular is I can take that element, move it to a completely different portion of the DOM, and all of these bindings continue to work, right? Like all of these values here, these uh, ng4s um, continue to work even though we're no longer in the original location. So that's the first part. The second part is then when we open the menu, we show the menu, now we need to position the menu relative to the root. So how do we do that? Well, I'm not going to run through all this code, but I'll do it quickly. Um, essentially, we take the root, which is that the button on the page, we get its bounding client rec, and that gives us uh, the position of that button in relation to the browser's viewport. We then essentially default the styling of the menu ref to be relative to the root ref. So we're starting, we try, we start out by trying to give them both the same left and the same top offsets. Then I have to trigger change detection so that uh, Angular actually opens up the view menu, which is driven by uh, a view model. Once the view port, uh, once the menu is open and has physical dimensions on the page, we can then get its bounding client rectangle. So now we have the menu open on the page. We see where it exists in relation to the viewport. Then we go about nudging it left and right, up and down, so that it doesn't, uh, it doesn't exceed the constraints that we want within the viewport edges. Um, and this is just kind of a little math, a little nudging here and there, some mins. And then ultimately, once we have all of the adjusted rectangles calculated, we can go ahead and apply the top left width and height to that element in order to, again, push it into the center of the viewport where it can consume uh, a more meaningful amount of space, try and make as much content available to the user as possible, regardless of where the actual HTML select component is located uh, in the DOM or in the app. Um, so there's a lot here, but there's not too much. I've tried to keep this as simple as possible. Um, the goal here was not to create a really robust uh, custom drop-down menu. Uh, there's a lot of things missing here like keyboard navigation and um, and ng model integration for example. Uh, the goal here was simply to explore this idea of being able to position this drop-down menu such that it can make the best use of the viewport, right? It shrinks and grows with the viewport availability and the content here, uh, but also such that it renders in the root of the document such that we can uh, best leverage stacking order and Z index, uh, and we don't get accidentally clobbered by Z index context lower down in the document object model.